Look familiar? If you know anything about making a good weld, you know that 75% of the battle is good prep and good fit. On today's episode, we're gonna go over how tax can heavily influence your fitment by shrinking and distortion. But instead of fighting those tax, I'm gonna teach you how you can make them work with you. It's Halloween, so you can tell I'm a beautiful butterfly. Let's get to it. Now we're gonna start first by slapping together some T-joints. Now I know that these are really simple techniques as far as fitments go, but it translates to more advanced fabrication techniques. What we gotta know is that tacks are very predictable. For example, if we go ahead and put a tack on one end of this T-joint, we don't put any pressure, we're gonna see that tack get really hot and then cool off. And as it cools off, the other end of that T-joint should start to lift up, leaving a little bit of a gap. We don't want any gaps in this. We wanna make sure that the fitment is perfect and you can mitigate that pulling from that first tack by just applying some pressure with some man clamps. If you can find some way to clamp your material down, that's probably gonna be your best way to mitigate any type of distortion, why you tack, why you weld, Fixturing is really key to keeping that at bay. Even when we start to weld these out, if we put it as a perfect T-joint, a perfect 90 degree angle, and we go ahead and put a weld on one side, it's likely gonna pull to the side we put a weld on pretty much every single time if we don't do something about it beforehand. What some pros do if they don't have any clamps is they'll actually align the T-joint a little bit out of square first. If it needs to pull, say, this way, they'll put the weld on that side, and then it'll end up drawing and pulling that direction. That's something that a professional welder will learn from experience because they've seen it happen time after time again where heat will take metal and move it, but it's very predictable. Now a groove weld is similar to this T-joint in the fact that we've only got these two tacks to make, so they're gonna do the exact same thing when you fit it up, but instead of a groove weld lifting up, it's probably gonna spread apart, comparatively speaking to the T-joint. The biggest difference between this T-joint and this groove weld is that we're trying to get an open roof and maintain a certain gap. Before we put that second tack on, we need to do a little bit of squeezing, maybe have it clamped beforehand, and maintain a certain gap. Again, that all sounds really simple, but let me show you where a lot of people just make this way harder than it needs to be. We'll start by putting a 3 32nd gap in these two pieces of plates here. So we'll take what our most common thing is, is using the same filler rod we might be tacking with to fit it up. We just busted the flux off to maintain that perfect 3 32nd gap all the way across. They got it laid flat, they got it right here. Maybe they'll put a hand on it a little bit. Let's put our tack on. I like to tack the back sides and kind of alternate back and forth until I can get that puddle to connect. And then that tack's gonna cool. This is gonna happen every single time you go to make a plate, you'll see that it's shrinking on that side and widening on this side. Now, while it may not look like a lot, if you don't adjust this, then your root's gonna look different when you go about welding it. So what I see a lot of students do is they keep it in there and then they give it a, a good squeeze around that wire and they'll put the second tack in with that fit up rod in there so they can maintain that 332 gap. The only problem is because things are gonna still shrink on both sides, now this rod is absolutely stuck. You're gonna have a hard time getting that sucker out. So a lot of students, what they'll end up doing is not using this fit up rod and just kind of eyeballing it and then they come out with a really uneven gap. Instead of fighting that filler metal and trying to wrestle it out of there or whatever the means are that you need to do, let's just go ahead and stick the filler metal in this time we're using an eighth inch gap, not that it matters. And we're gonna go ahead and tack one side. Once that one side is tacked, we're gonna let it cool. We know what it's about to do. It's about to open up this side right here and make this side a little tougher. At that point, we're gonna remove this wire. We know that it's gonna be wider on this side, so we just, usually I'll do it a little quicker while the weld, the tack is still hot, so it's a little easier to move. And once we get that even gap, just tack the other side. It really is that simple. Tack, remove the rod, give it a little squeeze, and tack again. And now we got our perfect gap. But things get a little bit trickier when we start working out of a straight line and get on something a little bit three-dimensional. I think at this point, it's a good time to mention our sponsors over there at Everlast. They truly are friends of ours. They've been a sponsor on the channel since I think it's conception. And I've been using Everlast since before Weld.com for about six or seven years at this point. And they have just about everything on their website, no matter what budget you have. This is the Thunder 255 MTS, a true multi-process machine. We just got done flux core welding and stick welding. We're switching over to TIG. We're gonna do a little bit of MIG. And they've got many more if this is a little bit out of your budget or maybe you're looking for something with more beans, not to mention the five-year warranty. So again, shout out to our friends over there at Everlast. We're gonna get our TIG torch plugged in and hooked up and start tacking some pipe. 
Now when it comes to the round stuff here, I would say four tacks is a safe bet to maintain that gap that we're looking for that we did on the plate. We're still gonna use the spacing rod, but we're gonna use it a little bit differently. We're gonna place it in between our two pieces of pipe. We're gonna line up the inside of our weld. And personally, when I have a spacing rod in here, I like to tack in between these two legs. Knowing how metal is gonna cool off, the direction that we weld in really matters. We're gonna start from right and go left. So by the time we move to this side, this wire right here is gonna open up a little bit and the wire behind us is gonna start to shrink. Or maybe it's vice, no, it's vice versa. You'll see, you'll see, it happens every single time. So check it out, we got the one tack in here, right? As we go, go from this side to this side, you'll see that this wire is loose now and this wire is tight. As we finish, the direction that we tack on is super duper important. Obviously this wire is in the way and if I've seen it once, I've seen it a thousand times of students still leaving that wire in here. So at this point, go ahead, even if you have to hinge it up a little bit, see how easy that wire comes out? No fighting, no struggling whatsoever. And now we need to look around at our gap. Don't worry about the two sides that are on this side. We need to focus on the absolute opposite side. And as we start to even up this other side and try to get the same gap, I'll even maybe add a little bit of that filler metal into, the, into that side, that exact opposite side, right next to where I'll put a tack to maintain it. So as you can see right here, my tack starts on this side and goes this way. Even though I'm starting on this opposite side, I still need to tack that same way in order to keep one side from closing up more than the other. If you were trying to do it on purpose, awesome. But if you're not, it makes it much more pain than butt. I think a lot of students have a hard time when it comes to fitting pipe because they're used to plate and they're looking at everything as a whole instead of just thinking about what's across. Because after we get two tacks in opposite of each other, these two things act as a hinge. So if I'm looking into this gap, the gap may be just a hair wider on that side and that's when you take your old manipulator and it brings that side down. If you need to open up that side, you can throw a wedge in there and open it up and then we can put our third tack in and the third tack will definitely seal the deal. We still wanna maintain the direction of our tacks, still going this direction. If you wanna go the other way, that's fine too, but just make sure they're all going that same direction. I think maybe just one more. Ha! We'll put this tack right in between one and two. At this point with a lot of smaller diameter pipe, we'll say everything 12 inches below, three tacks will probably be plenty for you. Putting the fourth tack in there is just to shore things up and make sure your gap doesn't change while you weld. But three is usually enough and I'll usually start on this open side and let that tack hold that other side. If it's smaller diameter pipe, like two inch or one inch, maybe only two tacks is necessary. But the big part is you just make sure that you can keep your gap the same all the way around. And I think we did a pretty good job of that without fighting anything. Now round stuff, I always tack opposite of each other. But when we switch over to some square stuff, that's not always gonna be the move. At this point, we should have a good understanding of what's gonna happen when we add a tack to something. That first tack is gonna probably pull and pry whatever metal it is. In this case, a piece of square tubing to a piece of plate. If we follow those rules, we just can set that sucker square. We'll put our first tack. We'll even try to apply pressure, pull over to this side. Everything's set square, flush up against that plate, so everything should be square, right? But then we go to try to put a square on it, and that is not square either freaking way. You can't move it, we can't manipulate it. So there's a way we go about tacking stuff like this so that we can square it up as we go. See how you do with less meat on your bones. Now that it's all cleaned up, let's think this through a little bit. First off, never assume the end of anything is square or that something that you're welding to is perfectly flat. Always put it where it needs to be and then just go ahead and check. So it needs to go a little bit this way and it also needs to come a little bit back this way. What's the best place to put a tack? Probably right back here, right? Because that's going to pull us both back this way and this way. So let's go ahead and put that first tack. Now what we're going to find out when we put this one tack in, we're not gonna be able to push it down too much, but we can pull it up okay. And we can also pull it back this way some more. 
So now that we have this one tack on, we have to pick which side we want to square. Let's see where it needs to come. We can also give this thing a twist at this point with just one tack on there too. So you can see just to how much movement you can get with just one tack on there. You'll never be able to move this part as much as you can right now. It looks like we squared up ourselves this way just fine. To lock in the square this way, I'm gonna tack right here. The second tack is going to ensure that this way and this way are going to remain square. With just two tacks, we can still move the part this way. Not so much this way because these two tacks on this side, all things to consider when you're putting them on. See where things need to go. Looks like we could use a little bit of a cheat down and we can still pull it. So we're gonna give everything we got in order to get that square on this side. Now, just like anything else, that third tack is gonna seal the deal for us. It's not likely after that third tack we're gonna be able to adjust anything. At this point is where you wanna make sure everything is perfectly square because it's a lot easier to remove, I guess, one less tack than putting one more tack in there and realizing it's still not square. We got four tacks on all four corners, and that sucker is square on all four sides, and that's how you'll use those tacks to your advantage. As you can see, good tacks are really influential when it comes to making good welds. I want to wish you all a happy Halloween, and we'll see you on the next weld. Maybe make me fly away there, I don't know.